second ones then. This should work, motherfuckers. Um, uh, yeah, so... Damn, we had such a great conversation going <laughs> and just going <laughs> deep into like troubles of, of running a business and, and talking like how to become a successful concept artist and, and all that stuff. I was just, just dropping knowledge and like what to do to basically make a million dollars in five minutes and nobody could hear that. So I guess, <laughs> I guess just uh, it's a sign that uh, this knowledge should not be, be shared. Again. Yeah, it should not be shared. It was a was a godly sign saying don't do this don't spill the bins <laughs> All right, um, let's pick up where we left where we left off here yeah so basically last year i remember we had that conversation that you guys weren't sure whether weren't sure whether it's gonna be you know keep going or not i don't know if i should supposed to talk about that too so i'm just doing we can talk wrong. about can everything talk. all right dude no. Talk about everything. No worries. This time we can talk about everything. Shit. Awesome. So how is this year compared? Different. Like completely different. Um, different because we had the support. That's the most important thing. Like uh, right. we had good sponsors and uh, even THU grow in a, in, a, in a crazy way. We sold out in seven days without announcing the location or even the speakers. Yeah, that was That's fucking crazy, dude. I remember <laughs> seeing that. I was what? <laughs> what? What? And, What's and going on we there? Always, we have reservations. Uh, we received a lot of reservations for 2017. So it's crazy. Right. In that in that sense, it's crazy. Um, Wait, for a year from now, yeah. you already have reservations? Yeah. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, That's we have rad, a lot dude. of people. It's, it's rad. Uh, in a way, it's really... Well, it's really good to know that people like what we are doing. Mm -hmm. In the other way, what well, it's super weird to to manage all the, everything we are doing, right? Because for part we are we are living in a small bubble. So even THU, we know that we have a lot of people that follow us and mm -hmm. they like us, they trust us. Uh, but it's a small bubble of let's say one thousand artists. Right. Uh, we've been discovered. Let's. That's what changed in the last, well, in the last three years, we have been discovered that there is, and you know this because of Learn Square, there is mm -hmm. a lot of, a lot of artists, young kids, that they don't have access to this because their schools don't teach them, they don't know how to research, they don't know anything. So they are in their bubble and they have a lot of problems because they don't know how to connect with the real world. Yeah. And so... That's our goal now with THU and everything we are doing. It's how the hell we change what the industry has been doing in the last 10 years. Like the same faces, same name, same process. And when we start talking and understanding problems around the world, only you can't connect with that audience. There is no way to connect with that audience from Mexico to Colombia to Portugal, Turkey, um, Spain. So what changed in the last year was we have been working in a different way and we have been searching ways to go outside the bubble. Yeah. That's the most crazy thing we have been doing in the last 12 months. Um, THU wise, we made the decision that all THU should be different. We have a lot of copycats nowadays of THU. A lot of people <laughs> want to do the same. Well, and there's only one THU, honestly. Uh, well, no, I'm I'm being serious here, and I don't want to interrupt you uh, on what you're on what you're going about. But um, but the truth is, uh, the reason one of the reasons I see why you guys were like all of a sudden starting to sell out, or at least that's what I uh, assumed that, that, that's happening, is you know, and and the reason why everyone or there is a lot of people being interested in what's going to happen in next year is because you guys made something that is not just good, but it's great. It's just great. It's one of those it's shows, even though I haven't been able to be there, and it's all my fault, by the way. I know I had an invite. <laughs> I was just like, fuck, why now? <laughs> <the first edition. laughs> and we talked about this last time. Yeah, we, uh, we, yeah, and you know, it's. I, I think uh, we were really close to make it happen, and then life happened <laughs> on my oh, end and um and basically i just had to quit but you know next year is coming very soon so 
And we I'm already sure. have 50% of the lineup for 2017 ready. Damn, dude. Time's flying. Uh, yeah. Th this year, we, it, but it's a big pressure for us uh, in terms of uh, what people expect from THU. Right. So when we start doing any THU, and this year particularly, is, we took the decision that, okay, we, if it's the same people coming to THU because it's a family and it's a family reunion, we don't want that attendees or family members to have the same experience. Even if you go, normally you go to the, all the other events and the schedule is the same, the way they organize the event is the same, and right. speakers, but it's the same logic. If you go to FMX, and I love FMX, or even the FCC, it's like the same. Yeah. So what we do, it's like bad for me, and it's good for the attendees, we change, we decided that all the events will be different. So this year, the event starts again at 9 o'clock and will end at 3 o'clock in the morning. But we, we kill a lot of stuff from the previous editions, from the art battles to the workshops, uh, even the happy hour. We, 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 we changed all the schedule. So, and we want to do this at least next year, we'll do the same, that if you're coming to THU, is a whole new experience. Even if it's happening in Troia, we are creating always a new experience. That's our goal. It's really, really bad for the business and is really, really bad for my team, especially, mm -hmm. because we literally change everything. We need to reorganize and learn everything from the beginning. And that is really stressful. This year in particular, we are creating a new venue. We are building a new, a new venue. Like literally building a new venue. Wow. Cool. Damn, dude. Damn. So yeah, it's it's stressful, and I want people to to enjoy, to to continue to to be part of the tribe and continue to grow. Like we have been talking about this, if you remember about how we build like a tribe. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, I remember like, that I'm, very well. I'm, I'm really really happy that we have our people trust us. And when when me and Scott in LA in November, uh, 19 of November, we gave the press conference. Uh, well, the, the live stream conference uh, at Gnomen uh, announcing, okay, we will do another THU if you guys support us. We will release the tickets, and if we sold out without anything, we will assume that we are doing the next, uh, the next edition. And exactly that happens. We, we put the tickets on sales, and we sold 80% in the, the first 24 hours. <laughs> and the rest nice. was like, 20% awesome. in six, seven days was really crazy. The waiting list nowadays is 500 people. Damn. It's, it's, so it's, it's, a, it's a huge jump from the last year, isn't it? Completely. Even yeah. the budget. We, we spent uh, in the budget last year almost 700,000 euros. And this year we are spending 1.2 million euros. Damn, dude. Well, it's a sign of growth and, um, and it just happens. Uh, I'm just I'm just super happy that it's turning that way. We have like a totally different conversation. Even though, you know, when I look back at what was last year and, you know, how the show turned out, it was freaking amazing. And, you know, seriously, you guys do in terms of organizing really true experience or something that is just unlike anything else, you can you can tell like this is this is the thing. Um you look at all the other shows, like every every show has its own formula. Every show has its own sort of vibe to it, and it definitely works uh, for majority of them because they keep keep coming back and and you know uh, and they keep keep happening. But when you think about one of a kind, unique experience that is unlike anything else out there, and and it's truly like to perfection in terms of how it's organized, where it's happening, who's there, what is it all about, you know? It's it always the first the first word that comes to mind is, you know, THU basically. That's that's at least what I what I hear and feel uh, when I look at the coverage and when I look at how people are talking about the show, the guys who or and girls who actually go there to visit and then come back and like, holy shit, that was an experience, you know? Um, it's really nice. Whew. 
uh, I was like shaking when you are saying it because I, when, you know, <laughs> don't shake. If, I'm not. I'm not that coming, scary. <laughs> especially coming from you, like like it's a good vibe. It's uh, we never know what. Honestly, from my side, we know that. We have a big audience nowadays, or at least the bubble audience. Like, they follow us, and the tribe right. members is is growing. But we I, we never know what outside the tribe, what uh, what actually is the opinion about the Um We decided this year to. I decided to start doing making ofs and explaining to everybody how we do it, especially for the other events, because honestly, and this is important for the community. But I can't continue to do the Two. Um, it's it's. I want that new events are start to to arrive and change things. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the other events uh, they continue to have the a process that I, especially from my point of view, it's not good for the community because THU is based in one thing, life. Right. Not about art. It's about life. Damn, it's about. That's deep. Yeah. And everything we do at THU is about forget the computer, talk. Right. Don't right, right. geek. Don't be geek. Like talk. Normal life. You have a normal life. Talk. Like learn about yourself. Learn about people that surround you. And uh, don't be a. Uh, we have been. I was. We are writing today the the, the survival kits for THU, and uh, the rules of THU. And it's becoming like we have rules, and people complain that we have rules. But I think it's the rules that makes the magic of THU. And one of the rules is don't be an asshole. <laughs> I, I guess that should be a rule to that applies to everyone, everywhere, all the time, yep. ever. <laughs> yeah, that, that's so at, at some point I was, I was, and me and Scott we talk about this. Like people at some point will hate us that we, we say this kind of stuff. Like don't be an asshole. Like we are here to the speakers are human beings. If it's like six hours talking with people, like respect him. Like. Come back another day tomorrow. Don't don't be in the line for hours and hours because if the speaker is polite, he will not say no to you. But he needs to to eat. He needs to relax. No. So we doesn't. have a lot of uh, we have a lot. Of, especially me, my my job at THU is organizing the attendees how to to talk with the speakers and saving speakers from some attendees and explaining the attendees how they need to do it and. So this is part of all experience, and um, and TH is about life. And I would love to have, even next year, we are starting to have less and less speakers that are really concept artists or 3D artists. We are bringing innovators, creators, uh, different minds that can literally make the difference to the, our community. And that, I think it's the missing part. Um, so that's, I think it's what, what is different from THU is that approach. And I hope in the future more and more uh, conference will start or, uh, yeah, conference. Uh, because the HU, I don't call a conference, I call an experience. Yeah. Um, but uh, I hope that more and more, when I see a schedule from a conference, it's nine to six, I know that they are doing something wrong. If you, want, if you are doing an experience, it's like from nine to nine o'clock, 24 hours. I wanted to do that last year, they didn't allow me. This year I'm going to nine to three o'clock in the morning. Don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. That's that's rock star, dude. It's a that's war. A they need to be. They need to be in really stressed to understand the. To understand that we have the same problems, but you need to be in a in a situation that you are enjoying every moment. Even the schedule this year, we manage the schedule from the morning to the night, where they they don't want they. We put the best the best content during the morning in terms of masterclass. We have really masterclass with the masters, and mm -hmm. so they need to be there, or they will lose an opportunity. And we'll not will not stream this at THU TV. So they need to be there if they want to to have this experience. And afternoon we have all the big speakers talking, so they need to be there if they want to have this experience. So at night. We will have the, uh, the inspiration talk, the most important talk during the day. It's at 10 o'clock uh, 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 at night, after dinner. And right. if they want to have the experience, they need to go to the gallery for the live drawing sessions uh, that will happen until 3 o'clock in the morning. And the mentorship and the happy hour will start at midnight. So they need to be there. 
So we, we changed the schedule to make sure that in terms of the importance of the schedule, releasing adrenaline to everybody, all the moments you will, they push you to, to have energy. So that's something we made. And of course, a lot of Red Bull, uh, a lot of coffee, uh, a lot of fruit. We are giving fruit this year, a lot of fruit, fresh fruit. You should, you should implement like uh, on the hallway, just put like hundreds of treadmills as well. <laughs> <laughs> just keep everyone healthy, you know. <laughs> yep. Now it sounds you, intense. It's intense, that, but I think it's the secret because when it's intense, you have more chances to connect. Yeah, of course. And and if you have more chance to connect for artists that they are, they normally they don't talk with others because they are really what's the name in what's the word uh, in English? I'm missing vocabulary. They don't talk. They don't know how to talk. They are shy, shy, shy artists. Um, this will social allow awkward. You, yeah, so this allow you to lose that problem, and that's why at THU the first rule at THU, you can't see anyone alone. Like nobody's left alone at THU. So if you see someone alone, you need to go and talk with that uh, that person. That's the first rule of THU. So all the issues an artist have when go to THU, even we have a lot of artists that go alone to THU. That is scary. Um, they will not feel alone. That's something that we we provide this environment and all this crazy schedule allow us to join the pieces to make sure that in the second day or third day, they are friends. And again, THU is about friendship. And that, that's why it's it's so hard to explain THU uh, without having this conversation. Like, right. it's, it's really, really fucked up to explain THU. That's our... <laughs> You go there, you don't sleep, you don't eat, you just talk, make art, and fucking enjoy life. That's what it is. Yes. It's about, the, yeah, it's exactly that. Yeah, it's, it's really, really, it seems it's really not just your regular, um, you know, conference or regular show where, where it's just, you know, let's do art and be friends. Like, it's, it's more than that. It feels almost like you're going for a job. You're going for your regular freelancer schedule. And you have to deliver on the top, top quality. Otherwise, everyone will, help, everyone will hate you. Nah, joking. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah but it's, it's, it's like even the, the talks when we are, and we spend, I spent, well, at least this year I spent, I didn't spend so much time with the speakers. The, this, we didn't release the schedule yet. Like the right. event is in 15 days, but I didn't release the schedule. But normally I spend a lot of time with the speakers organizing and telling them what they should or not. They need, they can talk like, uh, because we want to balance all the schedules. We want to balance all the content. So the attendees will have a perfect balance in terms of information. Mm -hmm. And even in terms of THU TV this year, we are making a lot of changes. It will be like a worldwide operation and, uh, to make sure that in terms of content, we are providing a different experience because as you know like live demos you can find everywhere or interviews you can find everywhere but uh, going deep in the mind of someone and it's really you can find that and normally it's always the same faces so THU allow me to to bring new faces and different suspects to right. The, right right to the market that's so that's that's all that's why THU is really it's a weird thing and is always killing my team and me specific because it's like complex, as you, as you can see. And Scott is now asking where where am I? <laughs> I was supposed to eat dinner with Scott. Scott is on town. Um, where are you at? But, Why are you wasting time with those guys? <laughs> we got a more important thing to do. <laughs> no, Scott is great. Uh, we had him. Uh, we had him on one of our podcasts before. And is the success of THU? That's what. What what I have and Scott, uh, what the other events that I have is Scott Ross. Yeah, Scott is the. It's it's indeed the big part of success of THU. It's incredibly crazy. And is he, he, he is also, he so um, is he crazy in a way that he's like super intense when running a schedules and making sure shit is shit is being done. And he's crazy in a way that he wants always to push the level in a different level. Right. He wants to push everything like 
speakers, let's go to these kind of speakers. We need to have this kind of experience. We need to push the attendees and our tribe members to this situation. So Andy, Andy pushed all that uh, to the to my team and it's it's something that is our mind always, okay, we need to deliver this. This is important. But he has a lot of experience, so he knows exactly how the artist mind thinks. Yeah, so I mean, he was the CEO help. of Digital Domain. <laughs> so, yeah, of course. But, but, but for a producer, producer side, he knows exactly right. what the artist needs. That's The other conferences are made by artists to, for artists. THU, it's artists for artists. But we have Scott Ross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's artists for artists run by badasses, basically. Yes, and uh, the and it's true. <laughs> Scott Ross is a badass. Yeah, he is. I like how you have him as a tribal shaman of the of the tribe. He's the shaman, <laughs> and he's the shaman. Is in cool. th you need to go to THU to understand um, the importance of the vibe of Scott Ross gives you the tone of THU, and it's really incredible the way he projects the tone and the powerful his message normally is, and even the the, the, the tribe. The tribe um, word was he that during the opening speech two years ago he said, "Now we are a tribe," and suddenly everybody start talking about the tribe. Right. Yeah, I like that. I yeah, like I was that like too. Daddy likes that. <laughs> Daddy likes. <laughs> um, so, so yeah. So one one of the funniest parts was you know obviously you, you, you've mentioned this is you guys sold out uh, before even announcing. Um, was was there any other place you had in mind back then, or you know, we always you always thought us this is going to be Troya, and no, uh, we had, we had offers from nine countries. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, that was a the crazy part of TU is when we decided that will be the last event. Uh, it was like we start to receive a lot of emails. Uh, about uh, making questions, and when you decide that we'll do a new one, we start to receive a lot of offers and uh, contacts to okay, what what you guys need to have T H U, and uh, we receive uh, nine offers from uh, Spain, Ireland, uh, Malta, um, Italy, Greece, and um, we saw all of them. And honestly, in terms of the facilities. Um, uh, Troy is the best place, right? Because it's very secluded, so right? That's I remember yeah, you, that's, you were saying that uh, that seclusion that's... basically just removes all the distractions you might have. Otherwise, wait, 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 wait. He's he's waiting for you guys. He's waiting for you guys at the restaurants. Sorry, sorry, guys. <laughs> no worries. See some insiders. That's... Um, Joining the, our cafe and hearing the planning THU, of THU. THU, THU, the secret is exactly Troya, like uh, last, last floor, last floor, where we have the meetings, sorry. Yeah, no worries, do take your time if you need to reply to so important messages, today. so is there? it's all live. People can hear what you say, so don't spill any beans, you know, don't spill, <laughs> spill any secrets. Hey Scott, so we're basically in deep red, far fifty million. Uh, what? 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 <laughs> yeah, I'm joking. Um, uh, but yeah, that's uh, the Detroit. That's that's the difference about if you go to Paris or London or Zagreb or LA or the other places. Um, it's like it's easy for the attendees to split. And yeah, I mean you're in town. Yeah, for sure. And even for the attendees or the speakers, they want to travel, they want to stay in the room, they want to go to that restaurant or to see a friend. It's it's quite easy to lost everybody. At THU, we we oblige everybody to be there five days. And it's the most, for me, it's the most difficult thing to achieve nowadays. It's like even Fausto Di Martini is not at THU this year because he couldn't take out five days from his work. And yeah, we have a lot a... of other speakers. Even you, we have been talking about this. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so that's but but it's part of the success. And now THU is part of an experience, and a lot of speakers understand that I want to be part of the experience. 
So they join us and Brenda Chapman, like even Dog Xiang. Dog Xiang in the beginning, he said, oh, no, no, it's too much time. When we explain, okay, I'm, I want to be part of the experience. So we need the five days. It's like, like a boot camp. And that's something that was like, whoa, this is happening. We have Dog Xiang, Brenda Chapman, Kevin Lima, and uh, Gerald Broom, and they accept to be five days in Troya. Like, this is huge for us. Yeah. Um, so, but being in Troya, you can't leave. The speakers are always there for you. It's easy to connect and it's easy to learn in a different way because you have time to go in a deeper conversation and you have time to really go in a different level. So it's really, really, that's, again, it's Troya, it's the five days, it's the schedule, it's the amount of time you are together. It's a lot of small details that makes the two and this crazy experience. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's really a commitment and, um, and even for the attendees, they yeah. know, they know they will suffer. <laughs> Prepare to suffer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a question because I remember, so it's, there is a lot of parallels in this discussion that we have here to our conversation that we had last year, uh, because it's almost like comparing to what happened and what changes are going on and, and seeing how, how the whole event is growing and, and how you are growing and, and you know, everything, everything around it. I remember uh, first time we, we spoke, uh, you were mentioning, you know, Portugal, you were talking about, we were talking about educational systems and, and education in general, uh, especially in Europe. Uh, I, I'm wondering if anything changed on that front now, you know, a few years in when uh, THU is as big as it is, is, you know, does it, does it change the minds of the stubborn that basically we're just shitting on you throughout years? Because I remember you've been mentioning that quite a few times. Yeah. It's just like, wait, what? I mean, I'm just trying to do oh, something for free and you're just <laughs> just being, <laughs> being a bitch, dude. <laughs> just bitching around and like... In, well, in, in the government perspective, yes. Yeah. Like, okay. The Portuguese government is helping a lot. Uh, at least... They respect us. That's, right, that's right. really, really cool. And even today, me and Scott, we have a meeting with the Portuguese government because we have a project called THU Playground. Um, and we understood that we can actually make the difference if you, if you want yeah. um, in terms of the education system in Portugal. We are not sure if you want to go in that battle, but it's something that we, we realize that it's at least we can make something different in Portugal, even in Europe. In Europe, but what makes the difference for us? THU change the way events are made. Is they are made, and you have a lot of new events. There is more and more people connecting because of the events, and I'm really happy that was because of THU that Promiseland started, uh, EFCC started, and and I believe in for the community, this is really really cool. Events helps a lot to connect people. And finally, because of THU, that change. What didn't change, and you just talk about that, is like artists, they still complain. They want everything for free. Yeah. I'm really free happy. Stuff. But nowadays at THU, we ask, okay, yeah, I can give you for free. Do you want to work one year for free to me? No. So why I should work one year for free to you? And even the, the podcast or the interview, that I think was the conversation you guys have with Leonardo, correct? Um, Leo Tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we've discussed it. I was, yeah. I was in Singapore. Um, I was in Singapore and listening to the podcast and it literally told the problems we have. Like people, and they want everything like art station should be for free. They don't understand the, the money we need to, to spend to make that stuff for them. And so that's the same problem. We still have it in a less, in a different way. We have, I'm, found, I'm finding that with THU TV. It's like we are talking about 100 hours of world class like uh, content and they want for free. So how, how do we change this? Like Learn Square, Learn Square is changing, uh, Art Station is changing. Like it's about this conversation that we can literally explain the artists. If you want this stuff, you need to support. If you don't support, this stuff will stop happening. In my my opinion. Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, I, I think the least educated part 
uh, is, you know, people that just don't know what it is. Like, it, they don't know what art is. Um, I find I find it frustrating, and I kind of understand it too. But it's it's really frustrating when you have conversation with with people that don't understand how much effort goes into where you at and what you do. And because they don't understand the amount of effort, they don't value that effort but either. Don't even, let's, that's the, my, my biggest fight now. And that's, that's, I believe it's the, the subject that will bring some problems in the future is like, I'm, I'm fighting against the selfish of the artist. Like you need to, you are a human being, you are living in a community, you want help. Why you only think about yourself? At THU, we can control that. And you, if you next year we'll go to THU, and we, you understand that there is no ego at THU. We respect each from speakers to attendees. We respect everybody, and we want everybody to respect each other. However, right. like at, outside THU, we can't control that. So nowadays, we want to continue to help. We promise to the tribe that if we sell more than 1,000 subscription online will decrease the price at THU TV. We did it. And uh, we have more and more people, they want everything for free and we don't understand why. Again, it's like education system, the way artists in the last 10 years, they start to talk about themselves. Only when they go professional, they start to to respect others. But it, what's happening? I don't know. I hear sounds. <laughs> so, um. It is my fight, and uh, at least our fight, and my problem. And Leo and Art Station, for example, is connected with THU really close because we share the same values and we try to help the community. But at the same time, we want to educate the community about how much work you need to have these things done. Even yeah. for THU, like people don't understand the amount of work we have to do to have the experience. Um, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have like the tribe supporting me and I know like when you ask the tribe to buy the tickets and they buy, I'm, I'm really, I know that I'm blessed. And I know that the other events, they don't have this and other projects, really cool projects, they don't have this. Um, but at the same time, me and Leo, we have been talking, how the hell we can change this? Uh, even with Daniel Wade, how the hell we can change mentalities? Uh, yeah. How can we change mentalities? That's our next goal. Yeah, it's difficult, and you know, it's uh, it's a part of perspective and part of uh, you know knowledge. I think when people get educated, um, a lot of them, uh, and it's not only artists. I, I think I think it's just population in general. That the more you know about something, the more re you respect you give it to uh, you give to it. Right. Uh, the perfect parallel is when you look at UFC. I've been talking about UFC a lot. Fuck. Probably people are like, just shut the fuck up already. <laughs> um, but uh, w when you look at the UFC and you look at people that go in a cage and fight in a cage, and it's just like it's so easy to go into YouTube comments and say, oh, fucking, I don't know, Conor McGregor, piece of shit, uh, or like, oh, an idea. you know what I mean? Like, just like shitting on, on fighters and like, oh, he lost, he's a piece of shit, he's a, he's a pussy, like, he's, he's not going to get anywhere uh, anymore. I, I don't it's think people understand how hard it is to be in the tournament, let alone to be in a cage uh, and fight. It's, it's literally fighting for your life. The amount of emotions, the amount of adrenaline, the amount of skills and years and sweat and everything you have to put into just being in that position to, to even be on the UFC roster, just, just to start with that. It's fucking it's insane amount of work. It's easy to complain and it's easy right. to... Uh, that's something that's... I don't know, like, we know this, we all know this problem, correct? You just told us, like, in all fields. But in our side, from our perspective, because at the end of the day, it's our war or our fight. It's like, it's this community. I love, I love this community. I love yeah. being, to work in this industry. And I want to make more and more stuff for the, for the industry. So, obviously, uh, I took the decision that my role, I'm not a good artist, so my role is different. I mean, so... I need to think about this because if I want to continue at some point, I want to give up because why, why the hell I should do this? Why the hell I should continue to spend? Because if it's about money, I'm not, I'm not having like a games company. So I'm not, I'm not selling mainstream products. That's another, that's another thing that the artists tend to understand. One thing is making products for the mainstream audience. 
The other thing is working specific for the this community. And the community is a bubble. Right. Like, where, where, if, you, if you know anything about economics, just tell me where it's like, how can you be rich just working for this community? Tell me. Even for THU, the, the tickets price, if it's cost 600 euros, if you sell, we sold out, and at the end, we, the amount you got from tickets is 320,000 euros. So if the event costs 1.2 million to do it, how the hell you can do it with profits? We, only, we can only do this because we have a great sponsor named Lenovo that literally love the artists and they allow us to do this experience. So the artists, they don't even think about this. Like, fuck, 1.2 million. The guys only sold, only can get from tickets is 320. And it's, it's expensive. It's expensive if for a lot of wallets, but it's not. But that is like a different, like, like you said, they start just to complain and don't understand why we are doing this. That's yeah, it's a matter of perspective, you know. For one, for for one guy, it's gonna be expensive. For other, it's not. I think That's it's cool. a it's a digital area. It's the fact that you know um, something that can for be download download you can download basically makes it makes makes it feel like it's cheap, and um, and we we kind of got used to a lot of things to and to have them for granted, like for instance. Uh, you know, music, right? You can go on YouTube and uh, and listen to pretty much anything that is out there, and you don't have to spend the penny to listen to the new song. It's just gonna be out there. Someone's gonna upload that stuff. Someone's gonna, you know, rip it and put it up, put it up, and you don't really care whether it, whether artist is making money o of that or not. <clears throat> There's a lot of uh, those small things where we just get used to it, and uh, it feels like all right, it's, it's there. So once it's there and it's free, then I guess it's gonna be free forever. Um, and we get used to those things. I, I, it's it's funny because I, I guess it's easier to recognize the pattern, and it's easier to sort of uh, start to see the value and and get out of that trap of you know uh, having everything for granted. If if you've been in this world long enough to know how it was even 20 years ago, um, or 25 years ago, right? Uh, for a lot of people that are from the Eastern Europe. Uh, you can totally yeah. see a huge difference in terms of how life was prior to Berlin Wall and how it was after. And uh, it also c comes with a, it's almost like a double-edged sword though, because, you know, um, being in a communist country also meant that there's so, it's some... some perspective. And, uh, <clears throat> and I can yeah. see this from the attendees from Colombia or attendees from Venezuela, right. like, or attendees from different, normally countries with a lot of problems and I can see the way they, they talk with us and the way they react and the way they approach us is completely different. Um, for it's THU, a matter of perspective. It's a yeah. matter of perspective. For THU, it's about passion. Like for, I, I don't care about the country you have if you have the passion and we talk with us and we have a lot of attendees with a lot of money problems and for the ones that contact us and explain the situation, they can pay four, five, six times. We try to help them to get like lodging in less expensive we, we explain all the tips and tricks to to spend less money in terms of food and we that's that's something we it's the best part of our day when we find someone with the passion that i want to do it i understand what you guys are doing but i want to be part of it but i have these problems it is a, there is a way to help me and when we find and we found fine i'm really proud and like blessed that we have been talking with incredible human beings and incredible artists too. So this THU give me like the perspective side of we have these artists anywhere, everywhere. So we want to go this year, we put ourselves in a position that we want to help more and more. Let's we start the conversation this. We want to go out the bubble. We want to go more to Mexico. We want to go more to Colombia. We want to go more to uh, Africa. We want to go more to countries that they don't have access to the kind of stuff England, United States, mm. uh, France they have, and we have been discovering and teaching and helping new communities, and this is, uh, THU TV has, in, has been helping us. We are giving scholarship for some places, we give like, okay, free access. And uh, this is something that from THU perspective, it's really, really cool because we help them to have a different perspective about this business, so. Yeah, it's, <clears throat> it's just you learn with perspective, you learn with, 
experience and once you experience what you, what you get out of it and how much work it is it, you have a different uh, view at it and different value uh, I like what you guys are doing and, and you know um, I, I like that you guys started doing those meetups as well where it's uh, you know you're, you're basically traveling around the world around and the world. yeah that's, that's meeting with artists and you know everyone can be there everyone can join and started kind of with a small thing and now it's a crazy thing it's it's, it's yeah it I felt really like a one-off uh, the, the first time i saw it but then like oh you guys are actually doing it for for real so and we have like a big list of places that they want to have us next year so we are choosing where to go next year we we are going to china we are going to taiwan it's confirmed um nice it's crazy it's really really it's really really crazy but the best part of this is THUTV, where we can actually go with my crew and we, we can spend like more three or four days discovering the art community in these cities. So it's like some part of this conversation and the best part of last this year was like discovering these stories and THUTV, I'm again, I'm using always using this expression, but I'm really blessed to THU help me to go and finding new paths and THUTV is helping me to discover new stories, new lives. And for me, myself, and my, we talk about it like raising a family, the value yeah. of the perspective about all these problems and situation put you in a position that you understand better what you need to do. And um, the meetups have, has been something that started in Berlin because two attendees convinced me to do it. I didn't want to do it. <laughs> and suddenly in Berlin, we have 300 attendees waiting for me and was like, what the fuck? And uh, from from Berlin, we went to London, we went to Poland, we went to Brazil, we went to Croatia. Um, and this year we only have Helsinki and Berlin because we changed the concept of the meetups. Now it's the gatherings and it's all about food and we give like a chef experience uh, to all the attendees. So it's like based in food and local food with chefs and local beer and or wine. So it's like a really cool experience. Again, it's not about art. It's about what connects us it's food right and like like a family you need food like in on the table that you, you li literally you have the bound with your family so it's kind of interesting uh, approach it's just like you know let's let's try let's try to talk with those guys through their stomach yeah we don't <laughs> we try to don't talk about art we try to don't like teach you it's about life that's more and creators and having ideas not about like technical stuff because technical stuff literally they have cool guys like you uh, or learn squares do you have technical stuff so they can find that the education part i think nowadays like the artistic community they have incredible incredible projects it's something that seven years ago eight years ago was impossible to find like nowadays yeah, on sure you have, you have a lot of you guys have been bringing like less expensive education and that was something that you couldn't find like three or four years ago. So even from the other, like other projects, like even school is with Nomen, like uh, Brainstorm, uh, that you have a lot of options that four, five, six, seven years ago, you they couldn't have. They were just have. not there. Yeah, it was so your uh, art center or nothing. Yeah, our art center was super expensive and it was still impossible. Is. Still is. So our industry grow a lot in terms of a lot of things. So, so my question is always why artists are always looking for the same thing when they already found it why they don't look for different stuff in terms of experience so we try like the gatherings and the, even teach you and teach tv everything people complain well you don't have live demos at teach tv and say why the fuck uh, you want live demos at teach tv so <laughs> you can find that easily online for free and yeah, you're not gonna make anyone happy like everyone happy you have to sort of like accept the idea that some people would just I know, complain I know, I know. for a fact that they just like to complain. Happy. That's that's my problem. That's why I suffer so much. I want everybody happy. <laughs> Dude, you have to relax, man. Uh, <laughs> I want you to run those <laughs> shows for like for at least a, a decade more, so you don't no, fucking actually, give up. I'm, 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 I married almost 20 years ago, and I will have my honeymoon in in December, I think. Um, so I'm. I'm more relaxed. I'm moving to Lisbon. My wife, we are, I've been living in Singapore and, and Lisbon, like part part of the time in Singapore, the other part of the time in Lisbon. Mm -hmm. Now we decided that it's time to raise a family. So we are moving to Lisbon oh, good. Awesome. full time. So I'm going to that. the gym. 
yeah, it's cool. So I'm relaxing. This even this conversation, I start talking, I realize, oh fuck, I have this is the problems I ha I face, and at least I want to. <laughs> But Your heart rate goes up, like, fuck, where's yeah, my insulin fuck. shot? <laughs> yeah, like, like that. But uh, honestly, this year has like, been an incredible life. Everything changed, as you can see at THU. Um, we have a good, an incredible staff this year. Um, we, we understood exactly what we need to do at THU. That was something that we didn't know last year was like, we knew it, that was the last edition. Um, we have sponsors that they are allowing us and partners they are allowing us to to do some projects that we will announce in the future. Uh, we, we are making THU Playground. We will announce in the future THU Playground. Uh, we are launching the new platform of THU TV and actually are doing our own platform and the new generation of content that is like, I believe we are doing something different. Um, we are starting our social responsibility program. Uh, we have been working on that. Um, that's something that I was I really wanted since the beginning of THU is like how can we help more than what we are doing um, so even THU the lifestyle brand and we'll be connected with uh, the social responsibility program so we have what's that can you can you elaborate what, what's uh, what's social responsibility program uh, from THU TV from we start talking with a lot of communities and a lot of countries we discover like the same problems we read on the news, like from the refugees thing, and and we realize that art can connect, like we realize now there's something like I've been following the some education programs from UNESCO and the uh, ONU, and I realize that THU can literally be part of that programs and help, oh. and being part the center of these programs. So That's we have cool. been I, we hire a really incredible girl that has experience in these fields. And working uh, in, in incredible, uh, terrible situations like from Afghanistan or Syria, and we have been working even and talking with Portugal even like, how can we do something with THU? All the content we have and all the con connections we have. So we are we have been developing that, and we will launch official in six months. That's awesome. That's awesome. There you go. We just click quickly becoming a platform to share the news that nobody would hear about. Yeah, actually, this until... is really something new that uh, even yeah. everybody thinks that THU is the six days in Troya. No, it's actually more than that, it seems. And that's awesome. I like how you guys approaching approaching it. You know, it's um, uh, it's not really a business of making, you know, whatever you have to make. It's a business of uh, delivering experience and then it so happens that uh, wh when you're doing that you're also creating a business for yourself and you know whether you're an artist or not you have to think about you know that part of as, as being a business you know whether you want to sustain it or no, not you know this decided that even the artists you teach you, you never want to lose money and yeah. I, I <laughs> told myself that I don't want to lose money the way like how do you use the money you you make and then THU, me and Scott, we decided that no, THU is for profit, but we really use THU money in the way that at, we will be proud about ourselves. And yeah. uh, if you want to make money, and Scott knows this, we will open a production house and we'll make money selling products mainstream, not with the artists. It's like it's quite impossible to literally make like being millionaire with this in this business uh, if you work for artists, at least from my perspective. Uh, I have a problem that if I have more money, I will spend more money in crazy stuff for artists. <laughs> so I, I, I could continue to do, if I wanted, to make the same THU with the same 700,000 euros. It would be easier, right? I, 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 with all the experiences you have. and Just and... for the view venue, we are spending tons for the view. I, why I'm doing a new venue? So, so you want to have a new experience. That's that's what what's making it different, you know, like when you're just creating a show you learn from you know you learn how to run it and you learn from experiences and then as you go things are becoming easier you can become more frugal and eventually spend less and less even though you know uh, if, if you just want to maintain what it is right but you're clearly not after that you're clearly just like I want to build something that is an experience rather than you know uh, yeah. just a poster of you know, uh, this is what's happening. Uh, however, I understand this year that we need to have a limit. Even for THU, like me and Scott have been <laughs> talking about, like, 
we want to do it. We know for the first time we are doing two events like this in 2017. So, and we will do 2017, it's confirmed, and you've already been invited. People are always asking why I never invite you. I need to, all I need to say, I invited you. <laughs> yeah, let's, like, let's, clear, let's clear the air here. <laughs> uh, I'm always being invited. I always, I always think about it, and uh, it's just like you, it didn't work out so far. Our selection process from advisory board, I have access to choose like five five guys like in, in a free will and without asking to the advisory board and you are one of my first choices in my five choices it's you um, damn Daniel so, so like I'm always asking people are asking why you don't invite Maciej I'd say I'm always inviting Maciej the problem is like schedule like it's really hard to manage the schedule from all the artists yeah. and the other if you have other problems like if you are going to another event in Europe at the same time we have a good chance not being invited to THU because it's not something different. Like that's the problem I told with the EFCC. Like why the fuck you invite that speaker? I wanted that speaker to THU. Uh, I said, no, I didn't know. Now I can invite that speaker for THU. And um, <laughs> like in the FCC, they had two speakers that I wanted at THU this year, and I couldn't invite them now. And um, yeah, I, so so that's another problem we have now. Like more events. The and and I can't say to you, hey, my sisters, if I go, if you are going to THU. You can't go to other events, or you can't go to THU. So, I know it's, you. You told it's, me that already, and yeah, it's easy. It's and like, it's it's not even in, in most cases unless you know unless your life is built around travel, then it's I guess it's easier. If it isn't, then you have to really pick your battles and and you know find where you can wh what time and when you can go because if you you know flying to Europe is not an easy task, obviously. No, no. And, and the you know, THU, especially with family like, in, in mind. 90% are from United States. Yeah. So we know that. But again, it's like a lot of small details that makes our life terrible. <laughs> It'll be much <laughs> easier to not care about the, the speakers and the exclusivity and all that stuff. Um, but again, like you said, like we are trying to make something different. And actually, I'm proud to have this. At least I, I have a crazy life, but at least at the end, I'm proud that I'm making something different for the community. And that is something that makes me happy, at least. At least we are trying. Me and Scott always say, we will fail, we will fail. And say, we are always failing. People don't know, but every time we start THU, to organize THU, until now, we only accomplish like 30% of our ideas each year. So we, we can't, like, when we wrote the plan for the edition, uh, from the previous three editions, we only accomplished 30% of our ideas. We fell right. during of the process, so we couldn't achieve. Even last year, my biggest plan was, this is the last year I will burn a fucking horse on the beach 10, 10 meters high. And a real we horse? Spent, uh, no, uh, <laughs> a real horse, like a hood <laughs> horse. So I spent a lot of money doing the project. <laughs> And at the end, I couldn't do it. I didn't receive the authorization from Portugal to build the fucking horse. Were they scared that it's going to happen? It's going to be the same thing as in real Troya? It's like something like, uh, <laughs> well, we are in alpha, alpha time in terms of uh, fire, fire problems. So it can't allow you to do that. You say, what the right. fuck? We have, we have the fire, the, well, the security issues solved. We have the, all the approvals, and why the hell I can do this? Like this is an incredible experience, and we are doing this on the beach. There is no way to have like uh, that problems you guys are saying. And even if you have, we have a security perimeter per perimeter of 100 meters. So like again, nobody knows this story. So like, was our biggest surprise last year was burning a 10 meters high horse. Yeah, uh, it's you know it's governments, man. It's just like they always uh, point. Imagine Albums. doing this it will be an incredible experience to everybody. It's the old fox like, that work there, you know, they just don't understand. Just grow well, up. It, I know it's rules. Now I now it's well, it's rules. Yeah. It's, we are sure. okay with that. That's why we don't have unic uh, unicorns or yeah, it's crazy. That's why we, we stopped doing some some shit. We stopped thinking about okay, we'll not go in that right direction because I will spend money again and at the end I will not have this done or so it's it's crazy it's always an incredible crazy process yeah at least if you want to do this kind of projects out of the box very cool all right um 
you ready for some questions, dude? Yeah, sure. Qu I'm pretty sure we have questions from the audience, right, John? Uh, yeah, there's about three. Um, two of them are pretty much related to art, so if you want to answer those. My internet is crappy right now, so I don't know if you guys are getting right, like I can hear you. disconnect. But uh, yeah, the first one says, it says, should an artist be persistent in applying for jobs even without years of experience or a formal education? Also, any advice on how to approach these jobs? I think Masiaj is better than me yeah. to answer the question. Do we have any? Do we have any? You know, uh, event-specific questions there, John? Yeah, uh, really, just one. It was okay. asking: Is is there going to be any THE restaurants this year? Mm, like last year? Maybe, maybe. It's it's on the process. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm going to fill in with some questions, too. Uh, John, yeah. can you repeat that last one? I, I'll answer it. Uh, well, the, the one you read before. Um, sure. I don't want to dismiss it, obviously. Yeah. Uh, it says, should an artist be persistent in applying for jobs, even without years of experience or a formal education? Also, any advice on how to approach these jobs? Uh, nobody cares about education. I think uh, we've said that many times, and you know, it's 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 never enough to repeat it. You know, nobody cares whether you have diploma or not. Not in this business. In this business, what matters is your portfolio, uh, and that's the really the only the only part that you have to focus on. It's the only thing that will will guarantee that you're gonna have a job or not. Nobody cares whether you have education, how much experience you have who you worked with, what is in your credits, and all that. Uh, maybe maybe in credits, if you have big projects in credits, that, that only can work towards your advantage. But if your art is not on the level that is expected for that company that wants to hire you, they're not going to hire you, regardless of what you write in your resume. It just doesn't really matter. Um, so question whether you, whether you should apply or not. If you feel your art is strong enough that you want to apply, apply. And if it's not strong enough, if the company rejects it, they will at least see the name. And then when you come back a couple of months later, uh, hopefully equipped with better art and you know with better experiences that you've learned over time, um, it will be good enough at that point. So you just you just have to keep keep trying, keep knocking knocking to the door, and um, always try to keep it professional as you can. Obviously, you know if they require that you, you have a resume or whatever, send that along. Uh, it doesn't hurt to, to, make, it, to make it happen. Um, and make sure you have a good website too. Like whether it's a Squarespace or any, any kind of service or if it's your own website, just have a, have a site that is super easy to navigate that you can click and see the work that you don't have like in fucking 50 menus and flash animations that nobody gives a shit about. Um, all, all you have to see is work and be presentable, have a presentable work and have the best work on your site. So you're always, you know, going with your best guns towards, uh, towards the company and, 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 and see, if, you know, if, if that's going to be good enough. If not, you, it means you, you're not good enough. You have to work harder, basically. Yeah, you, you talk really well. As and you I, I guess uh, Android applies to... <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. it, it, the hard work part applies to what you guys do. I mean, sort of looking back at what you said and how THU is changing and and basically, um, you know, experiences you guys you guys have. Like what just you said before, just uh, right before this question, is just like I'm not going to do certain things because I know they're not going to work out in the end, even though I really would like them to have, right? Yeah, you need to learn with the, when you fail, and that's something that the artists need to understand. If they don't, and I, we have all these questions at THU during the recruitment and the trial. Like, go to the recruitment, receive the feedback, and want them to say the bad stuff, not only the good stuff. And Flam was a good example at THU last year. Kenny just killed Flam, and Flam just received all the feedback that Kenny gave and was like only the bad part. And he went home, and during one month, he worked on all that things that Kenny told him and he sent back the portfolio. Okay, I made all the, the change you need, you asked. So what do you think now? And we are giving this example like go to this event, ask for feedback, but not the bullshit feedback. Ask for the bad stuff. You have all the artists they need to improve something. So 
try to focus on that, not like ego stuff. So, and this is something they need to learn and we all need to learn. Even I, even of course, we want to have our ego on top. But I honestly, I prefer when someone say, teach you sex in this and this and this. And if they give me an honest perspective and they give me honest opinion and I can see that, okay, you are right. I, it's much better at the end of the day because I can go home and can, can try to fix it and give a better experience. And the same with portfolios, like, like you said, perspective. And awesome. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and th for those who don't know, Athlem works at Riot Games now. So. And was the youngest guy hired by, by, by Riot and was a guy that, well, actually, I've been finding a lot of guys like with the talent and hardworking guys like FLM. So it's something incredible that I've been, yeah, been watching this new and incredible, so young guys, girls and boys. Uh, but the guy was, is an example in the way that people will say no, people will not like you all the time. People, and you need to go back and understand the good and bad comments and uh, improve, improve and improve and improve until someone will hire you. Yeah. Um, so FLM is a really incredible example. Uh, how can you actually this? It's not only talk, talk, talk. This is real life. Um, so that I don't know. What it's like? You just said everything, and uh, I think I helped a little bit. Or I hope I could help a little bit. For yeah, the awesome. No, for sure, cool. for sure. You guys want to take one more question and then head out? Uh, yeah. Sounds good. All right. This one, well, there's, we'll take two more questions since it's related to THU, uh, but they're short ones. This one says, cool. is there any must thing, like, is there anything that is a must to bring to THU this year? Diapers. Collabs. The collabs are the must of THU. Not the must, the collabs and the gallery. Uh, nobody knows what is the gallery yet, so we will announce the schedule in one week. But I truly believe that the collabs experience and the gallery experience will change the way events are done. Cool. So it's a must, I believe. Yeah, so we're going to be peeling our ears to uh, and eyes to, to see where what's that. Collabs will be an incredible experience. It's organized by Eduardo Gonzalez from Riot. Oh, I know, you know that the, guy. Yeah, he's, he's, the, he's the big boss of the Collabs experience. Nice. And I truly believe that will be something unbelievable. And, and the gallery is like, we have Phil Hell, Alberto Mielgo, Nad Nadezna, Yana Shilma, Carl Ortiz, and Jeremy Mann in the same room uh, doing what in the stuff. Fuck? Yeah, so That's awesome. it's, all, it's all about the fine art. Um, so I think it will be an incredible experience for everybody on the room. Very cool. And this last question says, how did you first approach creating an event such as THU and what should someone who wants to host an event expect? So if, if you want to host an event or organize something like THU, is the question? Yeah. 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 Or just in, in general. Or just in general. We'll start uh, small. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even. I don't even understand why people want to make events. This is the worst life you can have. <laughs> Especially because in the beginning nobody will help you, or you are prepared to have, to use your own money, like I use it. I use my own money for two years, and uh, or you are fucked up, because there is a lot of events around the world and. The brands are received. They are received like tens and tens of sponsorship uh, emails, and uh, nowadays they don't select anyone. They don't give money to anything. So even if you think, oh, I'm doing an art event and I will ask Autodesk and Adobe and they will support me, or they will not support you. That's not gonna they, happen. That's gonna happen. It's THU and Adobe and Autodesk. They don't care about THU, and and we have we are now. Yeah, they have their own events. So. They have their own events, and so you have to go in a different direction, and depends where you are doing the event, how many attendees you have. THU, we have a big problem. We are only 600 attendees. So when I go to a company and say, why the hell I should invest in a 600 attendee uh, event? So that's, I, 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 my advice is don't do events. But <laughs> well, let's say, uh, let's say um, you, you have money, or let's say you have that stardom 
that fucking aura around you that everyone make knows who you are and you can pull people in. Make an experience. Like, do something different. Don't do the same thing. Try to bring new... We have been this, uh, my, my goal is discovering new speakers like David Lee Strasberg was Scott speaker. Mickey Willis was Scott. I have the, the lucky to have Scott in, in this position. But we are always trying to bring different faces. Obviously, I have my, my top 10 in terms of artists that I, I'd never bring to THU, like Vitaly Bulgarov, like Maciej Kusciara. Uh, but they are the art guys to bring and they don't go anywhere. So it's really, for me, it's like bringing Maciej and Vitaly or James Dean is like, oh, fuck, uh, I'm doing something. I'm bringing some, some, something really unique. So if you want to do an event, try to do something unique. Um, so at least you are respecting your audience and your audience will be, they will understand that they are special for you. Right. And you are not the same thing the other guys are doing. At least is my perspective. And uh, prepare yourself to lose a lot of money in the beginning. Awesome. Yeah, if you want to build something big, for sure. I mean, you can all. You, it's uh, if you have that power in you, like if you know someone who is really well known, like a really good artist, or you're a really good artist yourself, but you also have a little bit of that, you know, business mind in yourself. Uh, you can definitely make it happen and. Uh, and make it small like what uh, Shadi and Aton are doing right now. They're doing um, but this it's event a different, in Switzerland. It, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a way different experience, though. It's a way, way different. Like if you're doing like small workshops, like it's a... Yeah, they are I guess that's what people, people were asking more yeah. about, you know. Like, if like it's a small, like what yeah, Shadi's yeah. doing, it's a small way to do workshops. It's really fun what they are doing. It's really cool. And I like the, the idea. That's something that if you want to do something like that, do like... Shad is a good example on item, but if you want to make an event like EFCC or Industry Workshop or Promised Land or ETHU, it's yeah, madness. It's, it's a madness for sure. Like, right. It's madness. I can I can imagine how the struggle. I know the struggles like EFCC Marco has. I know I can imagine the struggles in London because it's everything is so expensive doing stuff in London. So I can imagine how much they struggle too. So. Uh, Promised Land is like the unique case because they have like CD Project Red behind and uh, yeah. it's a different level. But um, but I can imagine again for them making the schedule is not easy. Like sure. my biggest problem is managing schedules, managing and imagine like it happened all the time. Like you confirm someone in the lineup and that person cancel. So and you bought the ticket because you really wanted to see that guy. So imagine like one day I will have Vitaly Bulgarov, one day, I hope one day, and Vitaly will say no. Who the fuck I will replace? How can I replace Vitaly Bulgarov? I can tell you how to get him. It's very easy. Like you just have to, you have to write, hey, I am from... Uh... He knows me, he hates me already. <laughs> And like no, no, just say, like, here. I just got hired on the super <laughs> secret government projects where we're going to build, uh, uh, where we're going to be built uh, EVA, EVA 01 from okay. Evangelion, <laughs> and we want you to design it, and it's, you, you, you're going to be a pilot of it, and then he's going to be like, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, maybe that's what I'm doing wrong, because I send, like, <laughs> Italy for now, like, I send all his friends to talk at him, from Fausto to Matthias, from Yenna, all the guys that know him, like, Go and talk with him. I need Vitaly badly, and I, I and myself, I send like thirty emails in each year to convince him. And it's like, <laughs> it's imagine like and now THU is a real well-known event. Like imagine now if you don't know anyone, then you are starting something from the scratch. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I don't it's even difficult. know I will survive in the first edition. <laughs> I don't even know I, I get that people in the first edition. I'm always how I got Scott Ross like. It's like what the hell? Like, it's whew, it's crazy. It's really crazy to to think about that. Actually. Well, you had a great idea, and I guess that's what pulled pe pulled oh. people in. So. Uh, one is. year ago, uh, three years ago, no one's understood my idea. Masia <laughs> <laughs> was that stupidity, and I admit that to honestly. Well, but you only needed one person to understand it, which was Scott. So. Yeah. Hey, so, I have to head out, Maciej. Yeah, yeah. Let's wrap it up. It was um, we're already uh, past one hour mark. So, and I know you have people calling you constantly. Where the fuck are you? 
Andre. <laughs> we need you here. <laughs> Actually, just yeah, thanks, another thanks message. Thanks for joining us, man. <laughs> I thank you. I, it's like a big, big pleasure and honor. I'm not the kind of uh, speaker that brings a lot of attention. So for me, it's like an, enormal, an enormous honor to be here talking with you guys and expressing everything about the issue. It's not common from my side doing that. I have this opportunity often. So thank you so much for having me again. And uh, I hope it was a good conversation for you guys. It was great. Yeah, it was fun. It was definitely fun. Uh, uh, and I, I just hope. noticed that my screen was cropped during the whole thing. Ah, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Uh, w <laughs> eventually, one day, um, we'll get it fixed. <laughs> I wasn't it's all able good. to stream it. No, it's, it's <laughs> fine. It's just cropped uh, on, on the right and left side. It's easy. That's, I mean, the majority <laughs> of the screen is still there. <laughs> oh, well. I mean... Okay. It was I guess, a pleasure. I guess, yeah. I hope to see you in, well, I'll be in LA in November, so I hope to see you in November. Oh, so. I'll, I'll definitely see you in November for sure. That's that's so, definitely going to happen. And if not, I will see you in March because I will be in March in LA too again. So if not, I will see you in September. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure right, we're going to have plenty of chances to see one we'll another. See uh, dude, thanks for coming. Thanks for spending your time uh, with us. I know uh, I know your event is happening very soon, so you, you guys are extremely busy, and we could hear that, you know, with your constant messages coming in. Where the fuck are you, man? We need you. <laughs> like everyone's like sending you messages, and then like bat signals in the on the sky, and like <laughs> with your face instead of a bat bat symbol. Um, but yeah. So, anyways, dude, good luck uh, this September with your show and I'm excited. I'm excited to see how it, how it turns out. And uh, I guess we will have a plenty of chances to get you in here again. And if not, then on other, on other occasions. In one year, in one year, let's do this a tradition. <laughs> All right. Yeah, dude, uh, I'm absolutely down for that. Let's do that in one, one year. A pleasure. Cool. A big hug. Bye. Uh, All right. So thanks for everyone who joined us live uh, for all the questions that were coming in and uh whoever is watching this later on thanks for watching it all um if you like if you like what you see you know what you have to do there's this nice subscription button there just press it otherwise just yeah you don't have to care about that either anyways uh till the next one and uh thanks andre again and bye all My pleasure yep bye take care guys